Hi, uh, welcome to AEC Hub. Uh, I've got Tim Callanan here from uh, CS Artisan, uh, and we're here to talk about BIM for landscape. Uh, so, welcome, Tim. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Lee. Um, and just wanted to kind of ask a couple of questions, you know, about um, uh, your your background and what where you see BIM for landscape at the moment. Certainly, um, I'm a chartered landscape architect. Um, have been so for uh, a number of years and run. Uh, CS Design Software, um, which we set up in the 1990s. So up until three or four years ago, our um, principal um, product was a, an AutoCAD add-on solution, which we redeveloped about 10 years ago as a web-integrated um, solution, um, with the focus always being on the, the information. That, that was the bit that has always interested us as a um, software providers, mm. um, but um, clearly the, the opportunity which uh, presents itself, um, which we see as being a very exciting opportunity for the landscape um, profession, um, um, opening up the, the 3D fully informed um, model environment mm. and looking at projects rather than just through the traditional design and build phases, but whole life um, timescales. Um, obviously kind of survey information but right way through to the operations and maintenance which is of particular concern it's very much in the DNA of um, landscape architects Okay, yeah, and you're thinking much more about the longer term Absolutely. and um, you know, move it, moving towards BIM can provide you the opportunity to kind of look at other areas which you might not have been able to do before uh, I know recently we've been talking about how you could maybe get these models into virtual reality environments um, but also, you know, just some of the basics, things like clash detection, uh, being able to get quantities and schedules out. Uh, what other opportunities do you see are available for them? An awful lot of opportunities we probably don't even, uh, we've got no idea yet. Not until you arrive at a, a position where you have a fully informed 3D model, um, mm. are you able to, um, to perceive of the opportunities that, that present, um, present themselves. Virtual reality, for example, up until being perfectly honest, a few months ago, mm. I hadn't even considered as a as an option. Um, not just purely for a, a, a visual um, side, but mm. a, a fully informed, immersive environment where you can go and interrogate. You can see clashes, um, and you can see all the underlying information and um, warranty information, supply details, manufacturer information, and so mm. on and so forth within that environment. Um, it, it, it opens up a phenomenal number of doors, um, yeah. uh, without a doubt. There's also the engagement of um, manufacturers, which I think across all um, those involved in the construction industry is still a huge area of, um, that, that, that needs opening up um, in, in some capacity. There are an awful lot of players who are, who are um, bringing um, solutions um, within the landscape market, again, which is, um, you know, our core area, mm. um, th there is still a, uh, a significant need to, to bring manufacturers information um, and um, uh, enable th those manufacturers to be fully engaged in, um, in the processes, so um, we're, we're working with the Landscape Institute uh, very, very closely promoting the product data templates and using that as a, as a resource, as a structure to get information into the uh, BIM processes. Yeah, no, that's great, and you know, having that kind of data-driven design is something that Hopefully, we're all about. Um, and you know, uh, the the plugins which you guys are building, you, you've obviously had them on AutoCAD for a series of years. Uh, you've now got them on the Revit platform as well. Um, so when people are kind of a lot of people I hear say, you can't really do BIM for landscape. Um, would you like to just kind of quickly run us through, you know, what what the core functionality is? What what is it that um, CSR Artisan allows you to uh, allows you to do in Revit? Certainly, um, it's absolutely not the case that you can't do landscape um, in a, a Revit environment, um, you, you can't deliver um, BIM projects, that's absolutely not the, the case at all. It might be with some difficulty, or it, it has been, and indeed that's the, um, the void in the, in the market, is mm -hmm. um, why we started developing our specific Revit um, tool um, three or four years ago, and will continue ad infinitum. Um, the, the advantage um, with, with working in that, um, and in particular uh, with um, the, the, the Revit add-in um, that we have, is being able to um, 
take source information. So we, we've had a, uh, a cloud-based um, repository of, of information, particularly planting-based information, um, which can be taken directly into the, uh, the Revit environment. That is used to, um, to, to create model content, fully informed. Um, the rather innocent brief that we presented to our um, unsuspecting programming team at, at the time was, let's just start with, um, with planting, and straight away we were faced with having to place and create models on the fly, uh, model, model content um, and planting information on the fly, um, accurately on topography, sizing it as per the specification information, but then being able to, um, to grow that, um, that same um, um, species um, uh, information over a period of time um, based on the, again, the, the source information from the off. So not only were we jumping from 2D to 3D, we were jumping from 2D to 4D um, in one, in one um, fell, fell swoop. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's quite an ex I think it's quite an exciting time and, um, you know, some of the stuff which I've seen with it, it I think you can definitely get some quite, uh, quite exciting imagery as well as all the schedules and all the documentation out of it as well. Um, so, thank you for that, Tim. Um, yeah. We've got the website just up on there. I'm hoping it's around there. Um, so we'll be back with another episode soon, uh, but I hope you found that useful. Thanks. Thank you.